Hello guys and welcome, it is that SRB2 dude here today bringing you the third episode of the Splatoon Competitive Guide. Now, first of all, once again, I would like to apologize that I have not been bringing this series more often. Um, it's been way too long from since the last episode, and I sincerely apologize. Gonna be bringing this weekly, I'm gonna do my best to bring this weekly, and uh, I will try to not let you guys down. Anyways, today we are going to be going through the callouts for Moray Towers, so I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, let's get into it. Alright, so here we are in Moray Towers. Now, there's one thing about this map is that uh, there are a lot of positions that aren't really called out, like this area right here. This is pretty much used only for turf war, unless like a, somebody who somehow pushes up all the way into your spawn, but it's very unlikely for that to happen. But anyways, here is the first position. This is called Spawn Plat, and it's called Spawn Plat because this is the only, like, look, this is the furthest plat away that is actually used by Elias. Uh, it's only usually used when um, the other side or the opposing side is pushed up so far in and um, the Elias needs to, well, pick off a couple so they can get back to the usual plat where you would expect every Elias to be. Uh, you can snipe people from Overlook, you can snipe people from the, well, the plat, you can snipe people from under plat, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go over those callouts, so don't you worry. Now, this is another area that's very rarely used, and it's only called out for Rainmaker most of the time. And I usually call this part Kinked Ramps, uh, or our Kinked Ramps, or their Kinked Ramps. It's only used for Rainmaker because the Rainmaker pedestal is placed right where that beacon is. You could expect anybody to be running up here if it's Rainmaker. Now, this big area over here is known as Overlook, and this is a defensive sniping position, and the reason for why I say that is because pretty much everything you can snipe here is on your side. Um, this is a good, very, it's a very good spot for E-leaders. You can actually snipe people from uh, their plat over there, and you can actually snipe some people from their under plat as well, if I do believe. It's not, you can't snipe their entire plat or their entire under plat, but... Um, that's why it's called a defensive sniping position because you can pretty much snipe everything on your side All right, so this area is known as quarter pipe and this isn't really an area that gets normally called out in tower control and splat zones for rainmaker Sometimes because uh, some people do bring the rainmaker up here, but it's very rare um, The ramp section it is well, we don't really have a call out for this, but Whenever somebody is on this part, or if you're going onto their part, it doesn't really matter if you're going onto their part, but if somebody has pushed onto this part of your, well, your ramps right here, just call out somebody is coming up from our plat, because this is plat right here. If somebody's coming up from your plat, you would expect them to be on the ramps right there, so that's pretty much why we say that. Now, this is the area that I keep mentioning, and it is pretty much the spot where every single Elia will be in every single game type, when, whenever. It doesn't even matter. This is known as plat, and of, including this ramp, we also include this with plat. It's only because uh, Eli is like to peak shot from, well, just like this. It, it's a very good uh, tactic of like taking out the other Eli or just like the tip of the head. Um, this plat area, this is the jet, like the usual sniping spot for every single Eli or splatoscope or, <laughs> well, rare splatoscope because normally on Mori Towers you'll always find an Eli. But um, you, you can pretty much snipe everyone from their zone. You can snipe people from their plat, or well, all over their plat. Um, you can actually snipe people from their overlook as well. So that's one thing to mention. It's, it's a very, like, well, people don't actually realize that you can be sniped from uh, your overlook or their overlook. It doesn't even matter. Now, this position is known as under plat. And for it's called that for obvious reasons. It's under the plat of plat. And yeah, that's a little bit confusing, but this area you expect to see Tentatex flanking or other close range weapons, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you can actually have some sort of a uh, good like team composition going where you have one person on the other side of the ramp, or actually not the other side of the ramp, the other side of the wall, and then you have another person over here, and you basically bombard this entire area. Well, not bombard, but just pretty much rush down. It's pretty. It's a pretty effective way of getting control of the entire uh, map, and then you can actually send somebody over up to uh, their overlook to just cause more havoc. Now, this place is called Zone for, well, obvious reasons. It could be their zone or your zone. Um, this is where the Splat Zone is on Moray Towers, so that's pretty much why we call it that, and it's 
pretty self-explanatory. Now, this ramp is called Zone Ramp, and this is pretty much an area that we would normally call out uh, for obvious reasons. It's next to the, to the Splat Zone, so uh, this is called Zone Ramp. You can see pretty much anybody running up here. Usually, a like a longer range weapon, like a 96 Gal or Splatter Pro. Now, this entire area, including that ramp over there, is known as Sneaky. Now, of course, in uh, Tower Control, this area is a lot smaller, but uh, this is pretty much called the sneaky area. It's pretty much another way of trying to flank around. You can actually get up into uh, Overlook if you're sneaky enough, no pun intended. But yeah, in Tower Control, this area is a lot smaller. You don't have the ramp there. It's just like a little platform. And it's a lot harder to get up to the Overlook when the platform is that small. Now, this is pretty much the last remaining callout that's actually relevant, and it's pretty much the last callout on this map, actually. Uh, this is known as mid. It could be either your mid or their mid, our mid or their mid. Basically that. It's uh, it's pretty it's easy to like know out. It's if you're on their side, it's their mid. If it's on your side, it's your mid. And um, pretty much you could expect anyone to be running here, usually at the closer range weapons. You, of course, you won't find a sniper here unless it's tower control and um, you've pushed the tower pretty far up. Now, it isn't the easiest thing to call out for this map, mainly because there's just, well, you go down and pretty much everything, or like all the call outs are basically on top of you once you're in mid. Now... The sniper, though, can pretty much call out everything because usually the sniper is going to be standing on plat and it makes it very easy to pretty much locate where every other enemy player is. So it is very important for the sniper to be calling out most of the callouts on Moray Towers because it's much easier for him or her to actually locate where people are. And so uh, with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this part. Please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both in the description below. Do it for both if you're feeling generous. And as always, guys, this has been that SW2 dude, and I shall see you guys in another video.